Hi folks, this is Dr. Sweeney. What we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about solving piecewise differential equations. Piecewise differential equations are very handy when we're working with applications because oftentimes we'll get applications where we want to think about it running in two, three, or maybe more blocks of time. So say for example, we're working with a circuit and that circuit only is running or we're going to run current through it for only the first three seconds and then we're going to cut off that current and then run and then we'll have no current running through it for any time after those three seconds. What you want to imagine is you're going to imagine a piecewise continuous function that models this particular situation and we need to figure out what is the function that we can then go into and retrieve from this piecewise continuous differential equation. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to talk about that basic theory um, and we're going to be looking at it from the perspective of first order linear differential equation. So let's consider this problem. Let's consider y prime plus 2y equals f of x. And we're going to define this f of x uh, be equal to 1 if x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 3, and 0 if x is greater than 3. So what we have is we actually have a piecewise differential equation that, in fact, is different depending upon the um, per particular uh, value of t, or in this case, x, that we're looking at. Now. I'm going to also define, I'm going to make this an initial value problem, so I'm going to have that, that y of 0 is going to equal 0. Okay, so that's going to help us out there too. In order to go out and solve this differential equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to act as if f of x is some kind of defined function. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to notice that it's a first order linear differential equation. So given that's the case, I'll have an integrating factor i of x, and i of x is going to equal e to the integral of 2x dx, and that's, uh, excuse me, e to the integral of 2 dx, and that equals then e to the 2x. When I rewrite my first order linear differential equation, that's going to give me then on the left hand side, I'll get e to the 2x y, and I'm going to go in and prime, and that's going to equal then e to the 2x f of x. And so there's that. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to switch over to a dummy variable in order to do my integration. So we've got, and we've kind of separated it out in order to do our first order linear, right? Pretty basic at this point. So I'm now going to integrate. I'm going to integrate from 0 to x, and I'm going to change this to e to the 2t, y of t, prime, dt. And that will equal then the integral from 0 to x of e to the 2t, f of t dt. We're going to actually do this integration from 0 to x because what we're doing, we've got this initial condition. We've got the y of 0 equal to 0. And so consequently, we're going to need to have one of our bounds be 0. Okay, That's just going to actually make life a lot easier for us. Now that that's the case, I'm just going to continue this. consider the left-hand side. So when I consider the left-hand side, I know by the fundamental theorem of calculus that this integral, the integral of this, is just whatever's inside. So that's going to end up giving me e to the 2x, y of x, or excuse me, e to the 2t, y of t, and we'll evaluate that from 0 to x. And so that's going to end up being e to the 2x, y of x, minus e to the 2 times 0, y of 0. Now we know given our initial condition, that y of 0 equals 0. So that means that this is e to the 2x y of x minus 1 times 0. So that's just e to the 2x y of x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider that right-hand side. And that right-hand side is the part that actually requires us to think about the piecewise continuous function that we have above. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, given that that's the case, I've got uh, if x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 3, then I'm told that f of x is going to equal 1. Because that's the case, my integral is going to go from 0 to, to x, and I'm going to have e to the 2t, and then f of t is going to equal 1. So it's going to be times 1 dt. This is going to give me 1 half e to the 2t. I'll evaluate that from 0 to x. And so that gives me 1 half e to the 2x minus 1 half e to the 2 times 0. 
and just doing a little bit of a uh, little bit of algebra, we end up getting one half times e to the two x minus one half, or excuse me, minus one. Now let's look at the, the second part. And the second part, this is one of the areas where it gets a little bit tricky. We're still going to be integrating from zero to x, but because we have two different functions, that our function equals one, f of x equals one when x is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to three, and zero when x is greater than three, we're going to have to separate it out into two distinct piecewise integrals. So we're going to consider now x greater than three. And so then the integral from zero to x, e to the two t, f of t dt, is going to equal, and so we're going to have first, we're going to go from zero to three, and that'll be e to the 2t times 1 dt. And then we'll add to that the integral from 3 to x. We'll go all the way up to x in order to find our function. And then this will be e to the 2t times 0 dt. So we split up the integral into two parts. On the one hand, we have the, the part uh, where we're going from 0 to 3, and on the second part, we have 3 to infinity, essentially. So now, this is going to end up equaling 1 half e to the 2t evaluated from 0 to 3, and then plus, this is just 0. Okay, so there's, that thing there is 0, so it's going to end up being just 0. So now, I have 1 half e to the 2 times 3 minus 1 half e to the 2 times 0. And so that ends up equaling 1 half e to the 6th minus 1. And that ends up being the value for that second part of the integral. So actually, it ends up being a, um, that part of it, uh, right, is, is constant. And that makes sense, kind of when you think about it from the perspective of, we actually just set f of t equal to 0. And so consequently, if you kind of think back, all right, well, what's the function that I'm going to get back? I'm going to get some kind of constant function back. Now, we're not quite done, because if you remember, we've now got two parts to our integral. We now have when x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 3, on the left-hand side, we had e to the 2xy. And then on the right-hand side, we had equals 1 half e to the 2x minus 1. And then on the second part, we had when x is greater than 0, we had e to the 2xy equals 1 half e to the sixth minus one. So what we need to do is we actually need to go in and we need to isolate y. We need to find y of t. And so consequently, we'll divide through by e to the negative e to the two x to both ends. When I do that for x greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to three, I end up getting y is going to equal one half, okay? e to the 2x and e to the 2x, they end up becoming 1, so it'll be 1 minus e to the negative 2x. That's for x greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 3. And then on the right-hand side, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get y equals, and this is 1 half e to the 6 minus 1 e to the negative 2x, because this is just a constant. That's just a scalar. So what I have now is I actually have the solution to my differential equation. The solution to my differential equation, it turns out, happens to be piecewise, which makes sense. It was a piecewise differential equation, so its solution should probably be piecewise as well. So what this means is that means that my solution is going to be piecewise. It's going to be y of t equals, and we're going to separate it out. It's going to be 1 half, 1 minus e to the negative 2x, if x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 3, and it'll be 1 half e to the 6th minus 1 e to the negative 2x if x is greater than 3. And that ends up being the solution to our function. So in order to solve piecewise continuous differential equations, to review, we want to solve the differential equation without substituting for your piecewise continuous function. If you remember, we did that. We went out we solved that first order linear part, and we just kept f of x the way that it was. Then when the time comes to integrate, consider the solution from the perspective of your piecewise continuous function creating separate solutions for each piece. Then make sure that any parts that you do not start at the beginning of the interval that you're considering, that you break up those integrals into their component parts and use the piecewise functions accordingly. 
So if you remember, that was the second one that we did where we had uh, our integral broken up from zero to three and then from three to x in order to account for the fact that our piecewise function had parts from zero to three and then from three onward. Then we rewrite the differential equation as a function of the dependent variable. That was the part where we had e to the two x y of t and then we had those two separate equations so we had to go in and divide through the e to the e to the two x. And then finally we put the solutions together to form our piecewise solution. So that's the last part there. So this kind of completes our discussion about piecewise differential equations and how we solve them. This is a basic overview of the method, all right? But it should kind of give you a framework for thinking about piecewise differential equations and how we might actually work with them. This is Dr. George Sweeney, and I want to thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful and you liked it, go ahead and click the thumbs up. If you want more of these videos and you want to get my updates, please click subscribe. If you have any questions or you just want to say how much you really enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave some comments. I do read and respond to the comments.